Hi, Internet viewers. Frank Rauscher again. This will be part two of having the make environment for the setting. We are doing the wall hanging. So what I'm going to show you now is how we actually, if you don't have that vine and you couldn't find something like uh, in, the, in the, the woods or where you take a walk or something like that, if you haven't found anything interesting, I'm going to show you how you can make your own. So uh, bear with me here. I'm going to uh, show you a way of creating your own wood uh, using brass wire and what they call ribbon epoxy. And I will sh show you how to do that. And uh, you can actually uh, make your own uh, branches and what have you. So bear with me, and here we go. Okay, we're back. Now, here's the, the vine that I collected when I was... Uh, walking through the woods and I got a hold of this and I thought this was really interesting. But not everybody's going to be able to find something like this. So you're trying to develop something that'll work for you and you may not have a chance to go out and walk and find something like this or the exact same thing. So I'm going to try to show you how to make this, okay? I've got a piece of copper wire, which I started in the, the previous video, and I started bending it, and I sort of came up with this configuration. And the biggest thing that I was trying to show everybody was, like, you need to have this looking like it's twisting and what have you. But at some point, just like this, it, it comes out away from the board so that you can mount the bird on there. So if I get one of my chickadees and I want to put this on, you know, I'm assuming my feet are coming down to there. I need to have it away from the board so that I can position this on the wire so it looks natural. So I, I want to uh, let you know that you sort of have to lay it, lay it out on your uh, board or whatever you're using, and then you have to come out. And then the, the other trick is that down the road, you're going to have to bend this a little bit too to mount this on here. So it doesn't go off like this or this, you know, with the weight of carrying the chickadee. So you have to balance it to see if it'll sit there. If not, what you're going to do is you're going to have to glue this and maybe a point over here so it stays steady. And then you could come out and mount your, your bird on that like that. Okay. I hope you can see that I'm moving things around here, but that's what I'm uh, trying to consider. So here's here's how what we go from here. I'll put the board off to the side. I have my uh, copper wire, which is the shape of what I want to try to do to mimic uh, my uh, vine. So, and you could do this. You can even create a tree doing the same thing and uh, sometimes what you want to do ahead of time is if you're using the copper wire setup that i used before uh, when you're going to mount the feet and the legs you may want to use the copper wire coming down and you can solder the two points where you want that to attach to the copper wire ahead of time and then we're going to start formulating uh, what I call, this is called ribbon epoxy. It's a, a blue and a yellow uh, epoxy. And what you do is we're going to knead this together to turn it green. Not that that's the final color, no, but we're going to start utilizing this on top of the wire to make it look uh, 
uh, woodsy and gnarly, you know, okay, so uh, that's what we're going to do here, but uh, just for those who want to deal with the copper wire, uh, the, uh, if you have the feet with the copper wire that we made and the toes and everything else, you may want to do some soldering of at least the legs coming down and, and being soldered, uh, to, to this wire so that later on you don't have to fight it and you could build the wood or what looks like wood on top of this. So let me show you what I, how I do this. Uh, this is ribbon epoxy. And if anybody needs any of this, I do have it available and it's not that expensive. And what I do is I get this and I start mixing it. I should have used a little bit at a, at a time. In fact, maybe I'll do that. Just this stuff's been sitting around a while, but once it gets warmed up by you just twisting it and everything else, we're gonna keep mixing this together. And it's equal parts because you're getting part of the blue and part of the yellow together. And we'll I'm just right now it's very stiff. Maybe I should have put this maybe I, I don't know. Uh, I've never done it, but uh you may want to put it in some warm water or something just to soften it up a little bit because this has been sitting around a while. And uh, the more you do with this, I'm just going to uh, do a portion of this just to show you because we could be here all day trying to make this putty turn green. And I don't want to do all that, but I want to give you the general just of how we do this. And you can see, as I keep on kneading this, and that's mixing these two together, it starts turning green. As those who know color, uh, yellow and blue make green. That's, that's how you can tell when you've got this mixed well, you get the two colors combining and you end up with a green mix. And as you do this, you, you can feel it. It gets softer and softer and it would be nice to be a little more pliable for you guys. I should have planned ahead and I didn't as usual. So, I'm getting there anyway, and I, I'm trying to make sure that you don't see any of the blue and you don't see any of the yellow, and you can see it turning green now compared to the, the original ribbon epoxy. It's not that hard. It's just that probably my studio here got a little cool. And if it's warmer, there's some yellow here. I'm going to try to mix that in. Make sure I got it pretty, pretty green throughout. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'll take a section of it. Like so. And sort of flatten it and pull it a little bit like so. Now what I'm going to do is wrap it completely around the copper wire. Okay. And I want to make sure that I seam it together when I roll it around so it's covering everything and it 
goes together as if like you're still kneading it right onto the wire. So you do this, okay? You get the general gist of it. And I'm gonna get some more. And I'll do that. Need this just a little bit so everything goes easier. And uh, I'm I'm leaving it eh, maybe a little less than an eighth of an inch thick and about that long. And I'll apply it where I left off. Pull it around, and then sort of shape it on there. And where they join up, you want to make sure that you're kneading it right at that spot where you're, and. And you want to make sure that the thickness is somewhat uniform to some extent. And if not, you just keep on, just keep on working it down so that it gets to one constant thickness. But it doesn't have to be. This is a little thinner up here. And that could be because the vine may be growing up and you can get away with that. But as you come down, you want to, you may want to get thicker in here. And for those that don't want to solder and go with the, uh, the the previous setup I had, where you may want to make this a little thicker so that you could drill through this later to put the legs and the feet in. That's another way of getting around uh, not having to solder ahead of time. And you got to do a lot of planning as far as uh, how you uh, want to... Uh, have your bird mounted and, and everything else. So let me do this. I'm gonna come in here. And I'm just gonna do a segment on here. I'm not, not gonna do the whole thing, but you'll you'll get the general gist of it. Uh, I think I got a little chintzy on, on this down here. I should have kept it thicker, but you definitely don't want to get too cheap on the material because you're trying to make it look a little thicker as you come down. And, uh, or you could do it the other way. You can make it thicker up here and get thinner as you come down. But depending on how you're mounting the bird on here, you may want to plan ahead on that. So... Um, the, and the one thing you want to really concern yourself with is that you're not so thin like I am right there. I'm going to steal a little bit from down here and come back up. And you can see how you can plug the hole. And then this just goes into each other very easily. So you don't even have a seam that you, you would show. So I'm going to work on this area right in here now and show you. Like with wood, you you it, it's we got a lot of bumps and everything else on here. So what you're going to try to do, and I'm going to get my optivisor on so I can see a little closer. I I actually got uh, this is like a pick, but you can you can use a lot of different things. Uh, you can even get a. A good toothpick you know one of the heavier ones and come in and then start just marking things out you know and and, and crisscross and just get in there and and make it look gnarly and uh, you can texture it and you don't want to get so uniform that it, it looks like yeah, everything's the same. You don't want to do that. So, uh, and, and if it doesn't look right, the nice part about it is you can just soften it again and go back in and, and mark it out again. But you can come in here, you can put some real gouges in, or you can, this is really thin right in here. So I'm using my fingers again, but I'll come back. I lose some of the definition. So 
And then maybe in one or two spots you want to get a little deeper. I am really... And even where sometimes you may have a little seam that's showing, that, that only adds to it, believe it or not. So you want to make sure you're texturing all the way around. I hope you can see this so that it's, it's not perfect. And you want to sort of make sure you're going in a couple different directions when you're marking this out. And and that's that's the key to this. And I'm not sure of the curing rate on this. I haven't used this in a while, but most of the time, um, I'm I'll be honest with you, I'm I'm sort of lazy, and I like to use the natural stuff. But getting a vine sometime that will support you or a, a piece of a branch or something like that, uh, you may get lucky uh, and it'll hold up. And then other times it may be too brittle, so you could create your own this way. And uh, this is a, a good way of doing it. But uh, that this vine that I was using here is pretty stiff. It's got some... Uh, strength to it and not not every piece of wood wants to hold up you know and I, I think that was like wisteria if I'm not mistaken or don't hold me to that like my, I think my brain was working right that I said the right thing but there there are vines out there that you could get some of them get so thick they can choke a tree uh, you can find something that looks interesting and and utilize that in nature you know just get what is given to us you know and uh utilizing that so you could see i'm I, it you don't have to have this perfect and even if there is a seam the seam could actually <laughs> add to what would be like a uh, part of the the wood, you know, if you if you mark it out correctly, and uh, and I'm really trying to make sure I'm putting line work not all over the place, but in in enough places that it looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm getting there down to this point. And I don't know if you could see this real well. I added like additional light in so that you could see me. I don't know if it's reflecting back well, but uh, you could t take a look. You know, I, I always like to have the extra light sometime and bring it in closer. I don't know if it's adding or not, but if I missed a spot or two, I try to texture where I can. And uh, and I would do it all the way around, okay? I'm, I'm just doing a, a segment of this so I could give you the idea. Now, after this is all done, and the biggest thing is, is how you want to mount that bird. So uh, you got to plan ahead as far as uh, if you're going to use this, uh, you sometimes where I have those points, uh, the wire for the bottom of the feet. Let me grab one here. This is one with the, the, the casting, uh, the toes, the wire is, you can uh, sort of plan to have a little more material down in this flat area that's coming off the board in a sense, so that you could drill a hole and have it mounted on there, or probably it would be better uh, with the wire, this wire behind, and the bird's facing that way. So you could grab it and get it in there and then clip off what you need. And then after you do the, the putty and everything else, you could bring your bird in. Like, here's the one I was setting up for the one for the board which was uh, the toes with the casting. And this 
would fit in like this, and then you have to accommodate that putty around it. So it's a little bit of planning you got to do, but it's not that bad. It really isn't that bad. So the idea is to mark everything, and I, I can't say I got everything 100%, but you could come in and put the strata lines in there and uh, uh, little gouges. You can go a little deeper in spots, you know, to, to make really, it, it just depends on what you want. Now, after that's done, uh, there's a curing time. I would say if you do it overnight, and I, I think you could get to using it faster than that from what I remember, uh, you can come back on this. And then what I usually do, because I may not want a green vine as this is, this is really dark. I even actually added some green in here, but you hardly see it. I just washed a, a wash of green in there, but I didn't want to bring it too green as if like it was alive. But in this case here, you want to paint this white and then you're going to go back and put on the color you want, or maybe you do want it green. But I wouldn't use the exact color green here, as you see, as when it gets mixed. You may want to put a little variety in there, a little brown, a little whatever. And that's your choosing. And if you observe something that you, like a sample from out in the woods, it may not be the shape of this, but at least you get an idea and this is what i use it's uh ribbon epoxy uh i don't know how many places have it it's not like a common thing and i can't even tell you where to get it other than from me but it's out there uh for other wood carver supplier uh, you know you probably you could get it but I have it available and it's, it's not that expensive. It's what I consider cheap for the amount you get. You get a lot of this and you can, uh, you can literally make a tree if you have to. So this is how I do it. And I'm mimicking this to some extent. And then uh, what I'll do is make sure that this looks good to me. Now, say after you painted this white and then you're gonna paint it whatever color you want after that, uh, and you gotta let this cure, okay, so that it's set, you could come back in with the micro grinder and grind away spots to suit you, you know what I mean? Or even texture a little bit more, uh, but it's going to gum up your bit a little bit, but you can clean them up too. And uh, that this is, you know, you can work it after the fact and then go paint it white again and, and keep on going. And you can build the whole thing all the way down and you can create your own. So that's another way of doing it. Or if you're just trying to make your own branch or something where it's uh, just coming off the board, say, so you just wanted a piece of wood coming off the board right here, uh, just a little branch. Instead of finding a branch, you can drill a hole through here, put a piece of wire right on through and cut off what you need and, and make your branch using the ribbon epoxy. But uh, if you get a strong enough branch out there, you could do it without this too you know what i mean and and plug it in it's a it's what suits you and maybe you have a piece of wood that is sort of flat like uh the bark is rolling or something like that and uh, it looks like it had maybe a branch that came out you can extend it and and put another piece of uh, wood that looks like a branch out so far and, and, and make it work for you too and glue it up, you know, and do it that way. So just wanted to give you options on uh, how we do this. And then I'm coming back and what's going to finalize this thing and I'm going to 
try to get this back together for you so we could wrap up the chickadee. I plug this in here and this one in here and I have it like this on here. I'm making sure when I, once I glue it in, I glue it in with five minute epoxy because that really holds together. Then I get this hooked up here and there it is. Now I'm going to uh, switch the camera around in a minute here so that you could really see this well. I don't know if this projects well as if like you got this against the wall, but there's your chickadee. And what I think I'm going to do is actually glue this vine here and take this the nail or tack I used, and I'll probably glue it down here too to so it doesn't move on me. And there's our chickadee, okay? And we finally got that to a point where we could say that we can call this a day on the chickadee. Now, the only other thing I need to do on the chickadee, the beak gets a gloss medium. Uh, this is Liquitex. And what I do is just dip my brush into it just a little bit. You don't want to get a little overloaded. And, and, and wet your brush a little bit and just touch the beak. No, no more than just the beak. And it'll put a little sheen on it like a satin finish. And that'll give you that bony look. And that'll wrap it up. And the only other thing you need to do, let me take this off for a second here is you want to clean the eyes because we've been monkeying around with uh, all the different stuff we've been painting over it and everything else. I'm going to wet my brush here. And what I'm going to do is just come in and just wash out the eye like so. And then just swirl my brush. Oh, let me use a larger brush because it will have more of a stiffness. Let me get in here and do that again. I'm going to wet that a little bit. And this thing will push that membrane of paint off. And then I'm going to do it on the other side. Let me, let me do the whole bird here. I'm going to show you in here in a second with the, here's the, this is called a gloss medium, okay? It, it, I'm going to wet this brush, get most of the moisture out because I don't want to do, and then I'm just going to dip that in till it gets just a little bit on the brush. You don't want to overload it. In fact, I'm going to take a little off. Make sure you get your lid back on. Sure. You could squirt this out. This has an applicator where you could just pour it out, but you're using so little, you don't even have to do that. Then what I do is I touch just the beak, going all the way around. And what it does, it gives a little sheen to it. And top and bottom. And I'm going to let that dry naturally. And uh, there's your chickadee, okay? And that is one of the ways uh, we can have a wall hanging, okay? Now, the other thing that may have happened, too, in maneuvering these feet, and you got to bend them around the branch and stuff like that, I see a spot right here where I'm seeing some of the uh, casting still showing through. I'll come back after I mount it and glue it and let the glue set and then come in and just with a real sm small brush, come in and just touch that up for anything that may have gotten, have lost some paint or something like that. And that this paint here was uh, uh, raw sienna. Okay, so you know, and uh, 
there's your chickadee. And I hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, I'm going to be starting a new one fairly soon. And I hope everybody's going to be interested. It's going to be a little more of a challenge than what we did with small songbirds. Uh, I'm going to try to do uh, a bird of prey, but because they're they're pretty big, I'm going to do a miniature, and uh, uh, I'm going to let you guys know what it is. Uh, on probably my next video after I publish this one. So I hope you enjoyed the chickadee. Uh, I uh, would like to see you on the next video. And if you did enjoy this one, I'd ask you to give me a thumbs up. And if you uh, would subscribe to my channel or uh put my name out there for any of your friends or people that may be interested in doing birds. Uh, I'm there. I do animals as well, which I may be doing again. I did the otters uh, originally, and uh, I thought that would be an interesting project to do, but it, it didn't catch on as much as some of the birds. So a bird of prey is something I want to try to uh, teach you. It's a it it's busy. It is a busy bird. It's it's uh, like these smaller birds of what I've tried to do is uh, it, they're challenging enough. Uh, the the owl is a uh, is a real neat bird to see, and and to carve. So uh, there's a few more tricks in the in the works on that. We're leaving almost every feather on there, uh, as you'll see as we get into it. And uh, so, again, if you need any of the products, I do use the micro grinder. That's a RAM micro grinder. When I do the hogging, you can do it on a RAM, especially on the smaller projects. But if you're getting into anything big, I have the Fordham with the flexible shaft that I use. And... Uh, like I said, with ribbon epoxy, I have that. Uh, I do uh, sell some paints, uh, but my preference is uh, Liquitex. But I don't hold to that. You can you can use any of the acrylic paints, and they work out very well. Uh, it's uh, just trying to give you different methods and different ways and how I approach it. Uh, the, the next project, uh, I will show you how to put markings on the bird before we actually put washes on it or anything else. We'll, we'll actually, uh, develop, uh, after we've carved the whole bird, we're, we're going to go in with pattern work on there because, uh, the one bird I picked is, is pretty busy with patterns. And, uh, but it makes it, it makes it really look good. So I hope you enjoyed, uh, the idea of making a wall hanging uh, using the chickadee. But if you didn't want that, I, I don't know if you remember what we started out with. Here's the one on a base. And a lot of people just like to do this and you don't have to get it in the hang up of a, uh, a base type thing. Uh, but if you wanted to get into a, a, a wall hanging type, like I showed you. Uh, you can get a piece of weathered uh, wood and just shape it or make it square. It doesn't matter. You can even frame it, you know, and, and do it that way. And then uh, come back and, uh, you know, you can have a, a hanging wall, uh, uh, a carving on a wall, I should say, uh, rather than uh, a base one. But uh, I've done more base po uh, uh, carvings than I did a, a hanging one, but uh, uh, I've I've gotten into a lot of different things. Uh, uh, sometimes I even done birds that had their wings open and they were flying, and I had a piece of wire come up underneath, and it looked like it was suspended in there. So there's different ways of approaching that. And maybe down the road when I uh, get going, uh, I may show you how to do an open wing 
uh, with the birds flying, okay? Uh, so, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I enjoyed giving you this information, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. And if you need any products, give me a call. I do have a catalog available. If you email me, uh, I'll gladly send it out to you. And uh, if uh, there's any advice you need or something like that, you can always make comments in the comments section of the video here. Or you can also uh, contact me by email, and I'll gladly try to help you out on any of the projects you may be doing. Um, and we'll go from there. And I'll always try to help you out. Uh, sometimes if you get between a rock and a hard place, Hey, here I am. You know, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to resolve some of the things that you may be having difficulty with. Uh, I had one gentleman who uh, had done, I believe it was the Carolina Wren, and uh, he sent me a picture of his finished piece, and he put it in the competition. And fortunately enough for him, he became, he took first place in the competition. And that was kind of cool. And that was the first one he had, I believe it was the first one he did with me uh, through the video. So that's kind of neat. And I'm glad to see that. And if anybody else uh, gets something done that really comes up neat, please send me some pictures. I would love to see it, uh, see how you guys are doing. And if I get enough of them, I'll publish them and show you uh, what other people are doing, okay, besides myself here. So it, it does work. Uh, the more you do, the better you'll get. So that's what I'm hoping for. You know, I make things look easy at times. And I thought that way when I was doing it, uh, when I was learning it, I should say. And uh, over time, You'll get better the more you do. And even the same bird, I keep on doing it. I've done the chickadee <laughs> hundreds of times, believe it or not. And wrens probably more than anything else. Uh, but stay with it and listen. Uh, I'll see you on the next video. And I hope I watch your whistle on that one. This is going to be something different. It's a, it's a bird of prey, okay? See you now. Take care. Bye. Here is the finished product of the wall hanging on the wall. So hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a fun project to do. And uh, see you on the next video.